JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 22nd. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about uh, yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar turned uh, down and underperformed against all but one of uh, the other uh, major uh, currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It gained only against uh, JPY while it underperformed the most versus uh, CAD, GBP and NZD in that order. The weakening of the US dollar and the strengthening of the commodity linked Looney and Kiwi suggest that investors' uh, risk appetite continued to improve yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, shifting attention to the equity world, we see that uh, major EU and US indices were a sea of green with the optimism rolling into the Asian session today. Japan's Nikkei remained closed uh, today due to a Japanese holiday. It seems that concerns over the fast spreading Delta variant of the coronavirus continued uh, to ease, perhaps due to upbeat um, earning results or because, uh, we said, as we said uh, yesterday, market participants may have had second thoughts over how restrictive any potentially new measures could be. In our view, following the economic damages caused from the previous lockdowns, the world may not be able to handle another round of such kind of restrictions. So any new measures could be softer as vaccination rates uh, limit the severity of, uh, symptom, uh, of symptoms of, uh, of new cases. Thus, with that in mind, we stick to our guns that even if we experience another round of selling in equities in the foreseeable future, we will not call for a reversal. We still believe that uh, the broader path remains positive and that any setbacks may, be, may, trigger, um, may trigger more buying, perhaps on fear of, uh, of uh, missing out of uh, further advances. Now, as for today, all lights will fall on the ECB monetary policy decision. At their latest meeting, policymakers of this central bank kept all their policy settings unchanged, noting that the pandemic emergency purchase program will continue to run at a significant higher pace. The bank raised its uh, 2021 and 2022 GDP and inflation forecasts, but at the press conference following the decision, ECB President Lagarde clarified that uh, headline inflation will remain below target over the forecast horizon. She admitted that they were uh, somewhat more optimistic about the economic outlook than three months ago, but highlighted that the decision statement was unanimously supported, suggesting that uh, tapering was not on any official's uh, mind at, uh, at the moment. Now, since then, both the headline and core CPI rates uh, ticked down to 1.9% year over year and 0.9% year over year from 2% and 1% respectively. Despite uh, the headline rate staying near 2%, the core one is still decently below that mark, adding credence to the view, though, to the view of policymakers like ECMB President Lagarde, Chief Economist Philip Lane, and, this, and Executive Board Member Fabio Barretta, who agree that monetary and fiscal policy support should not be withdrawn prematurely. The only one whose comments were somewhat more hoggish was Governing Council member Jens Whitman, who said that inflation is not dead and that he wants to discuss when emergency ends from a monetary policy point of view. Now, what's more, a couple of weeks ago, the bank set a new 2% inflation objective, saying that it could tolerate temporary moves beyond that mark. Remember that the prior target was uh, to, uh, to achieve inflation below but close to 2%. In our view, all this suggests that the bank is likely to keep interest rates at historic lows for longer and perhaps continue with its asset purchase programs for longer as well. That said, uh, with Whitman arguing that it will not be right for uh, the pandemic emergency purchase program to continue running after the pandemic is over, <coughs> 
excuse me, his colleagues may just decide to replace it with another form of quantitative easing when it comes to an end. Such a dovish stance is likely to weigh on the euro, which could suffer the most against currencies, the central bank of which are already discussing the timing of when they may start raising interest rates, like the US dollar and the New Zealand dollar. Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, uh, besides uh, the ACB decision, on today's agenda, we also have the US existing home sales for uh, June and the initial jobless claims for last week. Existing home sales uh, are forecast to have increased somewhat, while jobless claims are expected to have slightly declined. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much early, earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at uh, 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.